Yeah, right now America's not doing well. We're doing better. Palliative care is making us some, some inroads, but um, there's been a lot of research to show most people don't die good deaths. Uh, nine out of 10 Americans want to die at home uh, with dignity. Most don't. Most die in uh, ICUs or in, again, nursing homes um, with needless suffering. Uh, so we haven't been great at that. There isn't a great track record. In, in medical schools and in, in, in hospitals, it's not talked about often. Uh, doctors and attendings and uh, aren't comfortable talking about end-of-life issues with residents and trainees. So there's really a paucity of teaching of literature within the medical school training uh, of, of helping the patient with advanced disease. It's really something people are uncomfortable with, families and, 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 and the healthcare profession. So we hope over the next number of years to, to reshape that, that we can refocus on people's needs at the end of life. So it's an important part of life uh, versus trying to avoid the conversation. There was a New York Times uh, op-ed uh, a couple of years ago, and it was called the most avoided conversation in healthcare or in medicine. And it was this conversation, uh, doctors and residents and people are just uncomfortable with talking about end of life suffering. So it does get avoided. So palliative care has, uh, carried the mantle, carried the torch to, towards, um, towards treating those patients and educating people about the importance of end-of-life suffering and how to, how to intervene on a number of levels. Pain management, symptom management, medical management, uh, spiritual support, uh, psychological support, existential suffering to relieve that. And in this study that we're involved with, this project, the NYU Psilocybin Dying Project, really aims at that piece, the existential suffering, the psycho-spiritual distress people go through when facing advanced disease and potential death.